another new light from Poundland, and this time it's called an escape light. I'm not sure if that's just the brand, or, or I'm not 100 sure the the uh, even the application. But it's a, a hang light that can just be hung anywhere. It just runs in batteries, and it, when you push the front, it lights up, and it just lights up cold white with a, a central LED. And I've tried it in a room, and it's perfectly acceptable. It'd be a good tent light, I'm guessing, or or just a sort of emergency light, and you can certainly read by it as well. So it's, it's useful enough. The hook uh, swivels out the way and clips into the back. Does it clip into the back? No, it just pushes into the back, which is good enough. And to open it, you twist it, and it pops off like this to reveal the batteries. So much easier to change the batteries than some of the others. Now, how does that go with a... Uh, actually, let's do the, the battery retention test. No, nope, batteries are staying put, so that's good. So the hook in the back is obviously optimally positioned to actually press these in. So let's uh, open this up and take a look inside. The action of the switch in the front is a bit random. It's uh, very much, if you press at the side, it doesn't quite click the switch because it's a click on, click off switch. So um, let's uh, open this. But having said that, if you press and it doesn't light, then move your position your finger and press again. Ooh, it's springy. I can, I can see this is one of these ones that's going to pop apart with lots of springs. Right. So the switch is actually mounted at the side. Uh, and it's got a resistor in series with it. And the LED is just on a little sort of plastic press in stand that you, you do as I'm probably going to change this to a warm white LED haven't I yes I probably am and yeah it's got one protruding spring which is just sitting on top of the battery packs and the other ones are recessed with also the the uh, pins that align that and there's a sort of reflector uh, so that any light that comes out sideways is uh, optimized with the reflector it's quite a nice design actually that's quite attractive. Um, just the switch at the side is a bit of a bugbear, but having said that, I don't think there's much other place they could put it. Um, so yes, I'm going to change that for a warm white LED right now, and also deduce what value this resistor is, because uh, it's uh, brown, black, black, gold. So that's going to be, it's a four band resistor, that's going to be 10 ohm, isn't it? So it's pushing that LED quite hard. The temptation might be Let's double check that value. The temptation might be to uh, increase the value of that resistor just to make it sort of last longer as a sort of dimmer light. So let's see, uh, that resistor value is, yeah, it's about 10 ohms. Yes, okay, I'm going to modify that right now. Okay, I've looked at a suitable resistor, replacement resistor and LED. The forward voltage of the LED is about 3 volts, and if you want to measure the current in circuit, that an LED is actually drawing. I strongly recommend the best approach is to measure the value of the resistor, which the original one is 10 ohms, and then measure the voltage across that. So if we turn that on, and we measure the voltage across that resistor, it's showing 0.87, well, 0.88 volts. And if we then do the maths, uh, I equals V over R, which is, um, 0.88 volts divided by the 10 ohms shows that that LED is actually passing 88 milliamps, which is quite a lot for one of these LEDs. I'd normally only comfortably want to run that for a modest length of time at about 20 milliamps. Um, however, it's also a compromise because these are uh, alkaline cells, and if you had nickel metal hydride cells in there instead, um, the rechargeable cells, which is always a good option, then the voltage is going to be lower. It's going to only be about 0.6 volts uh, across that. So in that case, the 0.6 divided by the 10 ohms would be about 60 milliamps. It's still modestly high current. So what I've chosen is I've got a, a warm white LED and I've chosen a value of 33 ohms. 
and with 33 ohms, with nickel metal hydride cells dropping down to about 3.6 volts um, and then holding that for most of the discharge, uh, I'm only going to have to drop 0.6 volts across it, which is going to work out just under 20 milliamps. But we can test that once. Uh, actually, we can't test it because I've not got nickel metal hydrides handy. I've got them buried in some random item. But um, we'll be able to see it's certainly going to reduce the current to a, a much lower level, even with the the fresh alkaline cells at a total of 4.5 volts. So let's uh, desolder the original LED and we'll put the new one in. So if I lift this up, uh, I won't actually desolder it. I'll just cut it off because it's going to be easier because it's got to be pulled through these holes. I quite like the mounting here. It's quite a sensible little arrangement, the little press-on mount. So I'm going to cut that lead and fold the lead down, cut that one and fold the lead down. And that's the original LED out. Here's my new warm white LED, which basically just sits over um, this pin here. And when it's pressed down onto that uh, centrally, then you fold the leads back. So I'm going to make a wee note, and I'm going to mark it in fact, uh, that that's the positive side. Uh, so I've got a black sharpie, so I'll mark the negative side black. We dot. And the switch, uh, looking at the battery contacts, the switch is connected to the positive, so that's where I'll be connecting the resistor. So I'll just uh, desolder that existing resistor. Retin it. With a splash of solder. Tin the end of my new 33 ohm resistor. So the new 33 ohm resistor on. By reflowing those two pre-tinned contacts. Sit the switch back into position, noting that the wiring kind of just came around this side of that, uh, what's going to be a spring up there. And then keeping the resistor away from this battery lead, I'll just mush this in here. Um, and I'll desolder the remnants of that LED lead off there. I'll add a touch of fresh solder. Now, the LED leads, were they cut short? So, uh, let's see, if I sit this in... Yeah, I'll have to cut them down quite a bit. They can be cut down to about 10 millimetres. Which is probably just under three eighths, uh, just over a quarter of an inch actually. And I'll tin the end of those leads. I've got, still got a bit of lead stuck to that one, so I'm tinning the end of the LED leads. And I'll also tin the end of that resistor and just add a wee bit more solder onto that lead. So the negative which I've marked, I shall solder onto that lead there. And the positive, I'll solder onto the resistor. And my LED has now lit because uh, the switch is in the on position. I shall switch that off. And I shall sit this down and then just carefully just nudge the resistor down into there. It shouldn't get too hot because it's running at much lower current now. So that is the modification done. And all I have to do now is reassemble it. So uh, let me see, these springs, there's three springs that drop down, three long springs that drop down into the holes here. Quite like that construction. And one short spring that stands on a little pillar. It does seem quite a well-made light. This is just going to press on by force. Then goes this. And then this. Now, which way round does this go? Is it keyed so it can only go round one particular way? I think ultimately it can rotate. I don't think there's a sort of keying position. All right, okay. That's fair enough.
it may actually, oh, it's working now, uh, it may actually have a keying position. I don't actually see a keying position. I guess maybe it just rotates freely inside this housing. So I shall pop this on. Trying not to let all the springs escape. Does that rotate freely? No, it seems to lock. Uh, it seems to lock and... Just out of interest. I suppose really it doesn't matter what way the text is up. I didn't see anything specific for, for the keying that position. Oh, odd. Maybe I'm just missing something really obvious. Normally in these things you'd find some sort of reference position. And all I see is a slight matte sort of finish. Where's the hook? The hook's going to be when it's locked about there, pointing up the way. So to get the logo up the right way would be about that-ish. Okay. I'll just lock it in at that anyway. Rather than faff about any longer, it really doesn't matter what way up the logo is. In go the screws. It is a, you know, it, I do prefer to underrun LEDs wherever possible uh, because they'll, they'll last longer. But there is the point, you have to make a compromise between what you're going to be using it for, how much light you want, and um, versus, you know, longevity of the LED. It's certainly, it's going to put a lot less strain in the LED if it just does run in a 20 milliamp region. I'm guessing that front cover, the logo, is just friction, so it probably could be rotated. And then this just clips on again. And this should now work as a... Yep, that's a much uh, softer, warmer light. That's nice, it's very tungsten-y. Um, so, yes. And did the logo end up the right way? No, it didn't, but uh, it does rotate. You know, you can just rotate it round to the correct position to make it sort of look... Looks symmetrical. But yeah, that's that's a good result. Yeah, I've tried that in a dark room and it puts out tons of light. Ample enough to read by it. That's very good. Nice golden glow. I do prefer the... Well, as you guys know, I do prefer the warm white to the cold white. So uh, yeah, that's a nice hack and it's going to result in much longer battery life as well. So yeah, that's a good result. I do quite like the construction. It's very, very easy to modify. It's not just loads of things dropping everywhere and sort of paper backing like some of these push lights. It does seem to be quite a nicely designed light.